turn the camera like this, that's called a pan. And when you turn the camera quick like this, it's a swish pan. And in the... So you're telling me to travel a couple thousand miles, I can just do this? Not bad, Casey. Not bad. Phoenix, Scottsdale area, which is the first time I've been west of Texas, which is interesting to say. The desert's nice, I guess. But since I am on an elective block, which does not mean I don't have to study, it just means I have some flexibility as far as where I can be when I study. I packed in a couple 73 question interviews um, that are not in Georgia. So I'm here for only about like 36, barely 48 hours. We're gonna go see Dr. Richard Brown, a plastic surgeon out here, who actually is from Georgia. The Georgia Connections run deep on YouTube, apparently. Super fun day ahead. Let's take you along. And also to show you that I'm not kidding when I say study doesn't stop. This was my morning. I think a lot of you guys question it, like I still study when I do this. Yes, uh, I have to wake up. I've been up since like six because I knew that all today I was gonna be filming. Gotta do what you gotta do. Bob? the scenes with, if it'll focus, Dr. Richard Brown. What's up? This is quite the office setup you have <laughs> here. I mean, I don't I don't have my own logo <laughs> and name in my studio. Are you kidding me? This is awesome. Yeah, we have the wall built. It's pretty sweet. This was supposed to be, um, so this was supposed to be RGB. We wanted to have, um, to be able to do different colors back here. This actually does change. I've got to get, I've got to get the RGB for the rest of it, but I think we can change, you can change the color of the, uh... Look at how Thank insane you. this setup is. It's crazy, right? I can I, I only dream. Oh, dude, you'll have way more. Than All this. this, too? Come <laughs> on, man. I know, it's fun. <laughs> it's, now I just got to make good videos. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, show is. I, I'm in a plastic surgery office. Yeah, man. Like, <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, yeah, so this is, scoot over, is this centered? Maybe? Yes, no. Um, if you're seeing this video and you haven't checked out the 73 question interview with Dr. Richard Ricky Brown, uh, or I believe your YouTube name is Dr. Brown, right? Dr. Ricky, but I go by Ricky. I already know it's gonna be amazing. We haven't filmed it yet, but I know the interview is gonna be great. Uh, and as you guys know, whenever I do travel, I attach a little behind the scenes uh, to these episodes so that you get to not only know them as a physician or a surgeon, but also a creator. Yeah. So first off, thank you so much Dude. for having me in this beautiful, beautiful <laughs> office. This is a literal like videographer's dream here <laughs> <laughs> i know i wish they could see the setup we have here it's 
it's definitely like we mom and popped it because this was an office that my office manager used to be in. And then uh, as I started to get into more social media, I was like, I need like a room that we can soundproof and kind of do. So she actually decided she didn't really need an office either. And we just turned this into a little studio. It's, it's really great. And the fact that you're able to combine both your uh, medical and professional lives with your social media life, I mean, literally in the same building, yeah. is amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. So for those of you guys who don't know, could you kind of introduce yourself and uh, how many followers you have on your platforms? <laughs> but this uh, is the time to introduce the numbers. It doesn't matter. No, I mean, we can't. It doesn't. You know, it's funny. We talk about the follower thing all the time. But my name is Ricky Brown. I am a board certified plastic surgeon. I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm actually double boarded. I did general surgery first. So I did a full five-year general surgery training program in Chicago, and then plastic surgery for two years after that. Been in practice for 13 years now. And yeah, no, it's, you know, it's weird. Uh, we're at like 90K on Instagram, which has been great. I joined there in like 2016. TikTok, as you know, is insane. Seven and a half million, 7.6 million, which is crazy. I mean, I never expected that to happen. I literally joined in late 2019 and I was like, okay, what is this? Thing? I, I can't. I'm not dancing. Like, I'm not a yeah. dancer. Same. But, you know, and it's just happened. And then YouTube, YouTube, my YouTube journey has been crazy, man. I started a YouTube, I want to say, in like 2012, but I never really did anything on it. Like, way back when I made a page. And, uh, and I really didn't start making educational content until a few years ago. And then I put some stuff up, just left it, never really did anything with it for several years. And finally, just like, Last year, about a year ago, I really started focusing on it more. And we've grown from, I think we were at like 20K about six weeks ago or eight weeks ago, and we're at like 570,000 now, which is nuts. Like, why? It's crazy. <laughs> so how would you, in your own words, describe your content? Uh, so I'll tell you, when I, so when a couple years ago, I started to ask myself, like, what's my purpose? What am I trying to do? Mm -hmm. And, you know, everyone always thinks doctors like you should just be educating. And I'm, I'm kind of like, I do want to educate. So my, my goals on social media are the following. I want to educate, which I think is really important. And that's different on TikTok versus Instagram. But you know, right, like yeah. the platforms are different the way you educate. So educate, entertain. Some of it's got to be entertainment. So I try to do some comedy and like me and another doctor make fun of each other. And then we do like absurd plastic surgery stuff, just mostly for comedy. Um, and then inspire. I want to inspire people. So I do a lot of motivational stuff. And I really, really enjoy like, you know, you reached out to me and a lot of pre-meds have reached out to me in the past. Like I like to inspire younger people and just anyone in general to just get out there and chase their dreams and do what they want. Absolutely. And I think a big part of that is your story through medical school, because it definitely wasn't the traditional route. Yeah. And one of the things I'm always surprised about when I ask people to interview is how many people are actually from Georgia? <laughs> I um, know two of us in one room. Like I go dogs. Absolutely. Um, like Dr. Cellini was UGA alum, Jake UGA alum, yep. and even though I didn't actually go to University of Georgia, if you follow the channel for a while, you'll know that I actually turned down my BSMD program acceptance to go to Georgia for like a month and a half. So there's definitely still a small piece of my heart in yeah. Athens, Georgia. Yeah. Um, but just because I heard it last night over dinner, can you briefly explain um, your path to medical school to being a plastic surgeon because it definitely wasn't easy. Yeah, so a little bit of a weird journey for me. Just um, So as we talked about last night, I, uh, I didn't go to medical school until I was 27. So growing up, my father had a computer company selling computers to medical practices. So I was always around doctors and kind of was in, ingrained into that medical field but never considered being a doctor. So, and I kind of struggled in school early on, like I had some reading comprehension issues and things like that, just kind of a young kid who didn't really care. So as the years went by, I ended up going to Syracuse for college my first two years, um, and then transferred back to Georgia. And I didn't go to Georgia initially because I just felt like my whole high school went there. And I just wanted like, yeah. a, I wanted like a different experience. Shirt sure, about 200 inches of snow per year for two years. And I was like, <laughs> I different. think I want to get back to my high school friends, yeah. you know? So I went back to Georgia and, I was speech communications and still really kind of didn't know what I wanted to do. 
And I literally had a pushback moment at the table at the library at Georgia studying one night. And I literally just was studying for an economics exam and I was gonna go pre-business and work for my dad. And I just decided like, man, I don't, I don't think I could do this. Like supply and demand curves suck. Like this is so mm -hmm. boring to me. And I don't think I understood business at that time. I thought that's what business was. So fast forward, I go, I, I start thinking about medical, the medical field while I'm in Athens and I'm literally in like my fourth year of college and I go volunteer at the hospital, patient transport, transporting people around. And I really enjoyed that communication between me and a patient. I was like, this is really cool. So I started thinking like, maybe I'll go to PA school. Maybe I'll be a nurse. Maybe I'll do something in healthcare. And I didn't really know what I was going to do. And I just, at one moment was like, you know what? I'm going to go to med school. Like if I'm going to, if I'm going to do this, I'm just going to do this. Mm -hmm. So I start mapping out the whole thing, go home, tell my mom, like, I don't think I want to work in dad's company. I don't want to take it over. Here's what I need to do to get all my pre-meds done. I have a two six GPA. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but like, these are all the classes. And I had taken, I didn't tell you this last night, I took two chemistry classes without telling my parents and I got A's without really working that hard. I was like, okay, this is my brain. Mm -hmm. Like science brain is my brain. So all that happens, I basically decide like, I'm gonna go to med school, I take all the pre-meds, I take the MCAT, and uh, and that's it, man. I applied to med school, and there's a little bit more to the journey. Do you want me to tell them how like how I got in? I think that's a, that, that's a good part of the story, because okay. I mean, you were, you're 27. Yeah, so I'm 27, started. so I'm 27 at this point. And I, so I apply to schools, and I had a year off because, you know, typically you'll apply your junior year, you'll interview your senior year, and then you'll just matriculate to right into med school. Well, I was in my last year, and I pretty much did what you, a post back or basically finished my bachelor's of science and then had a year because I had to apply. And I was like, what am I gonna do? So I worked in the OR. We have a plastic surgeon um, family close friend who got me a job as an orderly in the operating room. So I was just mopping floors, wiping tables, cleaning rooms, like that was my thing. And, uh, and so I kept getting rejection letter after rejection letter after rejection letter. Now, mind you, I didn't tell you all this. I had a 2.6 starting out, but my science GPA was like a 3.8, and it brought my total up to a 3.0. So it wasn't like a 3.0, which it wasn't like I didn't improve or do well in school. Like, I did really well. Mm -hmm. And I did decent. At that time, I got a 30 on the MCAT, which was competitive in our scores. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, all right, man, like, I should at least get an interview. <clears throat> and I wasn't getting interviews anywhere. So... I looked at the list of schools I'd applied to, which was like 50 something, like I applied to a ton of schools. And of the ones that hadn't rejected me yet, I just decided, eh, I'm gonna call and see if I can get in touch with someone and tell them what I'm telling you, like my, yeah. my, my heartfelt story. So one girl at the, med at, um, at the Chicago Medical School basically took a liking to my story and was like, hey, I'm gonna get you an interview with the director of admissions over the phone and then if they like you, they'll invite you out. So I do this interview and I kind of tell her my story and uh, just how about how passionate I am about this journey and this is what I really want to do. And I got an interview and that was the only school I got into. Really, one shot is all you need. Um, 100%. And, and I think like, that's just an incredible story for a lot of people that want to pursue medicine, especially if um, you're on the older end, which is very opposite from me. I'm like a non-traditional student. Yeah, tell the, your story. The under, you're other end of the uh, special. We'll save it for uh, the video on okay, cool. his channel. Go subscribe <laughs> and check it out. That's right. Um, but before we actually give you guys a little sneak peek tour into the OR, just because um, this is a private practice uh, surgery center, which is very different than all the surgery uh, centers that I've been in. It's been all academics. So this will be quite the privilege for me um, oh, to yeah. be able to explore because the OR is my favorite place in the hospital. Love that. But um, if I could, bef until I get my own silver play button, <laughs> uh, I've been collecting, or not collecting, I just want to hold all the silver play buttons that from everybody that I meet. <laughs> you know, it's funny. So, so we we got we went from twenty to we went from twenty to like sixty or seventy, oh, yeah. and then we hit a hundred like that. So I order my silver button, and literally, it, I think oh, it only man. took a few weeks for this to show up. We were at like four hundred and something thousand by the time that thing even showed up. Yeah, um, YouTube Shorts mostly. It's, I want long form to take game. off. That's what we want to do. We want more long form, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, isn't it? uh, until I get my own. <laughs> Dude, I've you're held, so close. I've held 
three, three other ones. So this will be the fourth one. Nice. <laughs> Hopefully the fifth one will be mine. <laughs> it but, will. Uh, now I'll transition to the OR. Welcome to the theater. <laughs> so it's not every day that we get a whole OR to ourselves. Heck yeah. Let alone a private practice OR suite. I think it'd be a cool chance to show you guys what the different parts of an OR setting is and what a patient would most likely go through as they're getting ready for a procedure. Yeah, we're gonna walk you through the process from beginning to end. When you come for surgery, if you ever have to, this is what it's gonna be like. All right, let's show them. All right. All right, the first thing that happens when you come for surgery after you've gotten clearance and you're ready to roll, is you're gonna check in out here. They'll get your information, you'll check in, they give you your bracelet with your name, they double check everything about you to make sure that you got the right person for the right thing, all right? Exactly, right, right side's the right side? Right side's the right side. So then you'll come in here and you'll walk back to the preoperative area. And in the preoperative area, this is where the nursing staff is gonna ask you all your medical history, your allergies, everything that they need to know and that we need to know to keep you safe. They're gonna bring you back to this area um, and just like anything else, you take your clothes off, you put them in the bag, they give you that awful gown that you have to wear. The nursing staff's gonna double check your bandage to make sure that your bracelet matches the stickers that we printed for you. You'll get your IV placed here. And once they get you all ready, they'll let you zoop, zoom into the bathroom <laughs> to take one last leak before you, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna bring it into the bathroom, but you go to the bathroom. <laughs> And then after that, you'll come back out here. Then usually the surgeon will come back here, we'll mark you, we'll talk about everything that we're gonna do for the day, talk to your loved ones, go over some post-operative stuff. Once that's done, I'll jet out. I head back over here and uh, I go and I change into the scrubs that we use here. So I have a little changing room in here. Turn this on. <clears throat> so we come back here um, and in here, I got my locker, my scrubs, I get my hat, I get my shoes that I use in the OR, shoe covers, everything you need is here. We do some ortho stuff here now, so there's some lead for those guys when they do that. Then I usually jet out of here, and uh, this is kind of um, where Andy has his stuff is where I usually sit, I bring my laptop, I get everything set up, start to go through just pictures, confirming what we're doing for the day, making sure I have everything. And then this is where, when we talked about in my video, where I do some of my social media. So I'll jump on Instagram, I'll introduce the case. If I have permission for the patient, we get consent from everybody for consent for social media that gives me permission. And I don't do it unless I have that. So this is where I'll do some of my social media. I put my lab mic on. Once that's all done, the patient will wheel back here. And then we head into the theater. Doctor, it's uh, time to operate. <laughs> it's coming, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, the patient wheels in, the bed is made, they'll move over, anesthesia gets all the monitors hooked up, we'll go through that. We get everyone, we get them comfortable, we get a warming blanket on the patient to make sure they're cozy because we know they're nervous. Um, and then once that happens, Everything, everything starts to move fast and people are usually pretty nervous at this point, but we've given you medication and the IV is to make you calm, get a little, a little Valium kind of a medication, you know, the benzodiazepines, Ativan. And then, you know, you'll be on the table, anesthesia will get you oxygen, we get all the monitors hooked up, we get your DVT prophylaxis on your legs so you don't get blood clots. You get set up here and then anesthesia does their thing. And then while they're getting off to sleep, I'll go out and I'll scrub for surgery and then come back in once they're prepped and ready to go. All right, well, that is an all exclusive look into the OR, courtesy of Dr. B. Oh, thank you so much. This is really, really cool. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. Love it. All right, so surgery's over. Now we got to recover you. So you'll wheel out of the OR. The nursing staff will bring you in here to the recovery area. We'll rehook you up to the monitors and they just start documenting, giving you pain medications, documenting things from surgery, making sure your pain is well controlled, making sure you're not nauseous. And that eventually once you're awake and you're looking good and you're ready to go, you either go to the overnight recovery center or home. And that is your surgical experience. So thank you so, oh, right, thank you on. so much.
Dr. Brown for having me out in Arizona. It's been a blast. Dude, really. thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you. Your videos are amazing. The vlog's gonna be cool. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video, but you're doing something really cool that I think is going to help a lot of people. So, luck Thank to you. you, bro. I sure hope so. Yeah. Again, follow Dr. Brown if you have not. Uh, and if you haven't seen the 73 Question interview yet, please do. Get it. Signing off. Okay.